Okay, I was about to like shut it down, but we got another word that we got to get through tonight. Um, so we're talking about judging others, right? So I was reading um, ahead in Romans, and now I'm at Romans 2. And um, therefore thou art, okay, let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this word, Lord. Let this word be edifying to myself as well as your saints, Lord. Let me speak with you, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. Let your Holy Spirit speak through me. Let it be all of you and none of me, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so, therefore thou art in, ex in ex We're in Romans 2, and we're just going to go from Roman Romans 2, 1 through 10, okay? Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judges. Right? So we know that Jesus says, judge not, lest thou be judged. Right? So understand that when we judge others, we are still flesh. We are still human beings. So we're going to fall short of the glory of God. Um, we just we just are. We will check ourselves. We will check ourselves and we will try not to. And we will always try to be in a righteous mindset. And we will always try to do the right thing. But... Therefore, thou, thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judges, right? And not ju judge in righteousness. And let's look at the difference between judging in righteousness and then judging someone, right? So judging in righteousness um, comes with a solution. It comes with a better way forward. It comes with a reconciliation of the sin committed, right? Instead of judging, we're condemning, right? We're not. We're talking about judging in a way that we condemn others, that we say, oh, you're going to hell for doing this in regards to not judging righteously and coming up with a solution or a way um, to teach that person or, or help that person come out of that sinful lifestyle, right? So we do not condemn anyone, but we do judge righteously in regards to what is the best way to deal with this situation? What is the most righteous approach to the solution of this situation, of a place, of something that is happening and it's manifesting in the flesh? The flesh is manifesting in a conversation, a situation, or any of those things that we're like, no, 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 this is not right. Um, we come with a solution according to a Christ conscience. We do not come with um, the end all and be all of someone's destiny because we are not in position to do so, right? So therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judges. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, right? So we condemn ourselves when we judge other people to condemnation. We condemn ourselves because our commandment is to love each other as God has loved us. Love each other as Jesus Christ has loved us. And when we do that, we bring salvation just like Jesus Christ has, God has given us grace, right? Grace and mercy has been upon our lives in regards to how we walk. And not only our lives, but our ancestors' lives and our, and our mothers' and our grandmothers' lives, right? Because... We have made, we may have lived a righteous lifestyle. We may have been doing the right thing, but our forefathers may have done some wrong things, right? May have lived an alternative lifestyle and not in any reason to themselves, not for any reason like, you know, just because they intentionally did it, it could have been a generational curse on them that, and they didn't seek the righteousness. They didn't seek the salvation. They didn't understand. Everything in history had to happen for a reason, but now we are going forward in the understanding that there is salvation for the all right so we do not judge people in regard to them living a right lifestyle or a wrong lifestyle we help them through our own edification in the teachings of jesus christ and then when he, we help them understand things on a higher conscious so that they can come into a better understanding of life right as long as we don't understand how jesus brings salvation we can't bring the same salvation to other people and salvation is just freedom from this world, freedom from the flesh, freedom from the mindset of um, the incarceration of our flesh. Like we are, it is hard. It is hard to be a human being in this world and still be happy, still be free. That's why it's so much, um, you know, suicide rates and, and it's so much death and killing and, and just so many misguided people because it is hard. So for us to bring them out, for us to help people out, we have to change ourselves, which is what we talked about in the first um, message, is we have to change ourselves. Um, that is how we fight against spiritual warfare, right? So we do not judge people. We do not say, oh, you're going to hell. But we build ourselves up to be a help to others. 
but we sure but we are sure that the judgment of god is according to the truth against them which commit such things right so we know that the truth of god will prevail so we edify ourselves in the truth of god we put together what god told what was told to us in the old testament to what is in the new testament to come into an understanding that will give us the fullness of God's instructions, his prophecy, his un an understanding, a divine understanding. We will come to a divine conclusion in our understanding that will lead us to seek more, that will lead us to grow more, that will lead us to help each other and help um, others, right? So, um, but we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things, right? So we know that the judgment of God is to bring people into the salvation of Jesus Christ, to bring to, to their, there's grace upon your life. There's mercy upon your life. You are not condemned to hell. There is still a chance for you to come into the light. There is still a chance for you to be in the right way and understand that it is not for them to be in the right way, but for them to have freedom. That salvation is the expression of God's love on our life. That the salvation of Jesus Christ brings forth the freedom of our spirit that God always intended for us to exist in. The salvation is for us, not only, and it's, all, it's for God, but it's also for us, right? So God is pleased when we come into the salvation of Jesus Christ, but we also have peace and prosperity and power when we come into the freedom and the salvation of Jesus Christ. We can transcend our current existence. We can transcend our current understanding. So that is what we strive for. We strive for the salvation of Jesus Christ to transcend our physical existence. But, and thinkest thou this, O man that judges them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape, escape the judgment of God, right? So we can't think that if we are judging people that we don't escape judgment, because what God will judge us on, we don't even know about, right? Our heart posture, what we did while we were on this earth, all of us have fell short of the glory of God. So in regards to his judgment, we let that let that be. Like, let God judge who he wants to judge on that day. But leading up to that day right now, we have to know that we are in travail. We are laboring toward the salvation of Jesus Christ. We are laboring for the salvation of all. So in our labor, we are trying to bring people and, 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 and cultures and family and nations into the understanding of the salvation of Jesus Christ. Therefore, we cannot judge people or separate people or try to decide if anyone is worthy of the, the, the love of God, the salvation of Jesus Christ, because that is not our place, right? That is not our place. Or despises thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, right? So um, we don't want to go through the process of coming into Christ. We don't want to walk the righteous walk. We don't want to become meek and humble, right? So in that, we will never come into the fullness of God. If we are looking at judgment in a way, or we're looking at doing the right thing in biblical scripture in a way as we're wearing fringes and, and keeping the commandments so we don't have to humble ourselves, that is not going to work. That is not going to work. You do have to humble yourself. You do have to be meek. You do have to um, start loving each other. You do have to change your spirit and, and get the Holy Spirit. You do because that is the only way God can use you. Now, if we are um, we are thinking like we're trying to decipher what's true about biblical biblical scripture and what's not true, we are we at a loss. We are leaving ourselves at the vulnerability of the spiritual enemy because we are lacking the full knowledge of God. We are lacking the pursuit of righteousness, the pursuit of Jesus Christ. There is a pursuit. There is a journey in which we must embark on to become in the fullness of which God wants to create us in which God has created us to be in, right? Thank you, Jesus. So, or despises thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance, right? So the goodness of God on our lives, when we are judging people, we lack the understanding of grace. We lack the understanding that God is always leading his children to repentance, that we are all being led to turn around, to not go astray, right? That we have generational curses on us that need to be broke for us to go forward. That we have things that we have to break off of us to go forward, right? So the, the mark, the, the, the push toward the high mark of Jesus Christ, 
requires us to allow the Holy Spirit to transform us. It requires us to be patient enough to allow, allow the Holy Spirit to transform other people. And, and it requires us to teach about the goodness of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ so those people can pursue the salvation of Jesus Christ through that journey that they must embark on, through the journey that we all must embark on. So if we do not embark on the journey ourselves, we fall short of the knowledge to teach those to teach others how to embark on that journey and we have wasted our life we have wasted our purpose so we have to come into the fullness of our higher selves or we perish we perish in this life fighting against flesh and blood with flesh and blood when we need to fight against powers and principalities by the spirit of god being manifested within us so but after thy hardness right so we are or despise thou the riches of his goodness and the forbearance and long suffering, right? Forbearance means to forbear. It's for the future, like it is, it's, it's a process. Not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance, right? So we love God because God has covered us and he carries us and he keeps us and he speaks to us and he blesses us, right? Until we come into the love of God through the gratefulness of our hearts, through the understanding of how God has been in our lives and has been covering us, then we lack that initial faith to go forward and continue to walk that path. We It's called shadow work, right? It's called shadow work when we're looking at ancient comedic practice, when we're looking at spiritual practices and what has been done under the sun already. It's called shadow work, right? So you look at your life, you, un, you, you unpack the bad stuff, you unpack the trauma, you, you look at it, you take a good look at it, right? Because you have to understand how that trauma and how all those bad things led you to a place of understanding how, how God's strength has been with you and has carried you to a place of survival. Have you are you are now here, right? You are here, right? So you are here to go there. And now that you realize that God has brought you here, you can go there. Because by faith we grow in God. By faith we grow in Christ, right? So not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. So what we are doing in regards to our judgment, um, in regards to God's judgment, is we, were, we are planning for his wrath. We are waiting for his wrath to come down and just eat up everybody, right? We are saying who's going to get the wrath and who's not going to get the wrath, and that is not our place because we might very well be the one to get that wrath, right? So we have to understand, we have to step back from that because all we're doing is cultivating a cynicism. We're cultivating a mindset um, that doesn't fear, that doesn't serve God out of love, but serve God out of fear. And we want people to serve God out of love because this is the representation of the grace of Jesus Christ. But if we keep talking about people are going to hell, people are going to hell, and we are judging people prematurely when we're probably the ones going to hell, then we have to um, step back and understand we have simple instructions in this lifestyle, in this lifetime to be apostles, to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ, to bring people into the salvation, to understand, to be righteous, to be a good person, to serve humanity, to take care of the children and the widows. Our, our instructions are simple and our instructions is for this generation in this lifetime. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasures, right? So we, we're treasuring up things in our heart that it speaks to our ego, that feeds our ego in regard to our own righteousness, right? So we walk around with this, like holding our um, righteousness like a badge of honor, when in actuality our righteousness is not a badge of honor, but a duty in Christ, right? So... And the revelation of the righteous judgment of God. So we have to pay attention to the word, the righteous judgment of God. God judges in righteousness. Who will render to every man according to his deeds, our deeds, what we do? What are you doing to make a difference in humanity? What are you doing to make a difference on the earth? What are you doing um, in regards to your family and how you are treating and how you are growing your children and... and, and um, you know, what are you doing, right? So what are you doing to become better? What are you doing to make things better? First, we have to become better to make things better. So what are you doing, right? To them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for the glory and honor and immorality of eternal life, right? So who will render to every man according to his deeds? 
to whom to them who he who by patient continuance patient continuance right we must be patient with god we must be we we can't put too much um too much on our lives we put too much on our value and our existence on who we are we are merely human beings on earth to make a difference we want um all these things to come about in our lifetime when we are basically just sitting here to serve right we want to you know we want to be rich and we want to be famous and all of those things are of the world seek ye first the kingdom of god and all things will be added unto you the things that you want have been presented to you as an illusion of success when actually what you need is peace and power and love and honor, right? These are the big things that God wants to give to you that will bless your life and your existence and your name and your children and your generations to come. Who, um, to them who by patient continuance in well-doing, understand that well-doing, um, seek for glory and honor and immorality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. So understand that the attack is on Israel. The attack is on Israel because Israel is a blessed people, a royal priesthood, a, a blessed nation, right? And until they come up from under the disillusion of this world that has been so carefully cultivated to make us believe something other than that we are a blessed people, to be a blessing to many nations, um, which is all of this is coming up against Israel, right? All of this, the fact that, um, but unto them that are contentious, and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, un and wrath, right? So, um, obey unrighteousness. So, we're talking about do not obey the truth. So, the truth is one side, right? And then there's the other side, but obey unrighteousness. So, whenever there's a but, there's a different perspective. There's a different side. But obey unrighteousness, indignation, and unwrath, right? So, when we are giving ourselves unto unrighteousness, giving ourselves unto wrath giving ourselves unto indignation we are we are wrong we are outside of the will of god so tribulation and anguish we are looking for these things we are waiting for these things we are yelling about these things when we are should be yelling about the gospel of jesus christ when we should be yelling about how to become righteous in the sight of god right so we are putting so much effort on teaching condemnation that we are we are missing the beautiful part of teaching the righteousness of god the beautiful part of bringing letting god's power work through us to bring people into the light which is our our task right so but glory honor and peace so to the jew first and also the gentile right so we have jew as is, is the descendant of god like a you know that relationship that 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 called nation that called people but we know about that but we're not talking about that but glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, right? So we have to do good for the children of God and the children, the people that are not of the Jewish Hebrew background. For um, for there is no respect of persons with God. That is the main thing. There is no respect of persons. None of us are above um, being of servitude to humanity. None of us are above... Um, making a difference in the world none, none of us are below making a difference in the world and none of us is above um the lowest person in humanity we are servants we are servants first and until we come to that mindset we will constantly try to get um some type of honor or accolade for our servitude and there is no honor or accolade but what can be given to us by god so let's go back to um to them who by patient continuance in well-doing, seek for glory and honor and immorality, eternal life, right? So that is what we're seeking in our um, eternal life. Even if our body dies, our spirit lives on. Even if our physical flesh dies, what we did lives on in this world. Like, I don't understand. I think that is something worth fighting for. I think that's legacy right there. I think that's beautiful. So I love you guys so much. Okay, this for real. This is the last... Um, word for tonight in the revival so i hope you guys are feeling revived i am i'm feeling revived i'm i miss you guys i miss doing this
everything's been so busy and so crazy and this is my passion i love you guys so much if you have any questions or concerns um message me comment in the comment section we are fellowshipping we are in a revival um if you guys want to do a message um if you want to share something that you learn over the week with the um with the church um let me know so we can bring you up and bring you out and we can um start working toward our mission in christ i love you guys so much stay blessed we're going to pray before we close dear heavenly father thank you for your grace thank you for your mercy thank you for the miracles you are working this night lord thank you for the hearts that you that are being transformed from that are being trans formed in this moment lord by your power by your might by your spirit lord there is nothing we can do lord in our individual flesh in our individual selves lord so we ask and we call upon your spirit holy spirit we call upon your power god to come through lord to come through like a rushing wave and change the hearts of mankind and protect the meek and prosper those who, who are who have been waiting diligently upon you lord thank you father thank you god bless bless us lord cover us lord Keep all demonic spiritual warfare away from us, Lord. Anybody who is working evil, Lord, we, we ask that you keep them away in the name of Jesus. We ask that, they're that they perish in their own dealings, Lord, in their own intentions, Lord. That, that the righteous come through as pure gold as we have gone through the fire, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We praise your holy name. We serve you in the name of Jesus. Let the righteous prevail. Let evil fall away. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, loves, I love you guys so much. We'll talk in the morning for sure. This time, that's three is a charm. Blessings.